Welcome to our lecture online. And now when we look at part three of this exercise, we begin to notice that adding a quite a bit more fertilizer doesn't appear to be making a lot of difference to the yield. Matter of fact, when the farmer increased from 150 to 160, let's say pounds per acre, notice that the yield actually went down. And after we went back up to 170, it went back to the yield that we had at 150. And only at 180, there's a slight increase of the amount of yield. So you can see there's barely any increase in yield by using quite a bit of additional fertilizer. So again, we want to find what the variance and covariance is and what the covariance matrix looks like and what it actually signifies. So again, we worked ahead a little bit. We found the average in X and the average in Y. We calculated the variance in X and the variance in Y. Notice when we have a very large variance in the fertilizer used, we have a very tiny variance in the amount of yield. And so that is definitely an indicator that something is not very efficient or there's not a lot of use in using a lot of extra fertilizer at that point. Calculating the covariance, notice we have a covariance of five and now relate that to the variance of Y and the variance of X. It is much smaller than the variance in X. So when we have a, lar when we have a large change in the variable X, fertilizer used, there's a very small covariance, meaning there's not a lot of relationship between one and the other. All right, let's calculate the correlation coefficient to see what that number looks like now. So we take the covariance, which is 5, and we divide it by the square root of the variance in x, which is the square root of 125, and the square root of the variance in y, in this case, is 0 0.5. And so let's see what that looks like. And we get 5 divided by, take the square root of 125, and divided by the square root of 0.5, and we get 0 0.63. Now here, that means that there's not a strong correlation between the two variables, which means that 0.63 indicates that changing the fertilizer by a lot would only have a relatively small effect on the amount of fertilizer used. Since it's still positive, it does indicate that there's some increase in the yield on average as compared to the amount of fertilizer used, but 0.63 means there's not a lot of correlation between the two. It's bigger than zero, that's something, but it's much smaller than the previous two numbers we had, like which was about 0.98 or 0.99 and 0.91. So here at this point, you could tell the farmer that definitely is not a lot of correlation between using extra fertilizer and getting more yield. At this point, you're wasting your money. Don't add more fertilizer to the field. What does the covariance matrix look like? Again, we have the diagonal elements, which represent the variances. 125 and 0 0.5. So you can see there's a very tiny variance in the yield. This alone already tells you there's not a lot, of, a lot, not a lot of effect on the change in the yield when you change the fertilizer by a lot. When you look at the covariances, notice we get a five and a five, and that's very tiny again in comparison to the large number 125. A lot of variation in the fertilizer used. There's a very small correlation between the two variables. And then when we find the correlation factor, you can see it's small, 0.63. So stop using the additional fertilizer. It's not going to do a farm any good. So here's some examples that show you that there's definitely some practical uses to this. Now we apply this to farming, but this can be applied to engineering, to tracking satellites, you name it. We use this kind of thing in a lot of different applications, and it makes sense because it does give you that indication of how two variables are related to one another. And that is how it's done.